mode six data can sometimes, I won't lie to you, be a little hard to understand. Well, there's documentation with most all the OEMs out there, you can just click on some for a very minimal charge and some are absolutely no charge. Let's take Ford for example. I'm gonna to go to OEM One Stop, make that a favorite on your browser, OEM, the number one, the word stop, dot com. That's from nastiff.org, National Automotive Service Task Force. Very easy to use site. Click on uh, whatever you're working on. We'll say I'm working on a Lincoln and I'm gonna have this pop up here and I'm gonna have the ability from the motorcraftservice.com site that it took me to from OEM One Stop when I clicked on Lincoln to a bunch of things that are free, non-subscription services, and then also my subscriptions. Subscriptions will be for the service manual, downloading calibrations to update a PCM, things like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on OBD2 Theory and Operation. Remember that when you work on a Ford, Lincoln, or Mercury. OBD2 theory and operation in non-subscription resources. It almost sounds like it's gonna to be too mundane. Watch what happens here. As I open that up and I scroll down to whatever model year from 2016 all the way back to the very first OBD2 car, 1996, I'm gonna click on what I worked on here earlier, a 2001, and I'm gonna be able to scroll down and find the different mids and tids or TIDs and SIDs, whichever the case may be, non-CAN or CAN bus vehicle. Now we have our 2001 Ford document up. We come down here, we can actually get it to print or more practical, since some of these can be two and 300 pages, save it as a PDF to your hard drive or to a jump drive, whatever you want to do. Now, this is everything you wanted to know from A to Z about OBD2. Some of this is fairly basic, some of it's very, very advanced, and it will help you in some rare cases where you're getting a lot of frustration with a very tough to solve diagnostic problem with drivability. Now, instead of scrolling down through a bunch of pages, what we can do is go to edit, and find, and remember what it was, it was dollar sign 53 was our cylinder specific misfires for this 01 pre-can Lincoln that had a shake when the engine was misfiring and we had a code, but it code went away, but the light was on. So dollar sign 53, go ahead and say next. And there's the J1979, the SAE standard for mode six data. And these particular TIDs, test IDs, and their component IDs, specifically, cylinder specific. Remember we had dollar sign 50 and 00. That was just saying that we've got something that's going to possibly kill the catalytic converter. Don't know which cylinder, but when we look, looked at the dollar sign 53s and looked at 00 through 0A and so forth, cylinders one through eight, we ran into a little bit of a number that did budge the needle, if you will. Now, what do we do with that number? Well. It's cylinder specific, obviously, and right there it says there's a conversion. There's a conversion number you multiply. It's 0 0.000015. So to get the exact percentage of what that cylinder is misfiring, we take the value we saw in mode six, we multiply it times the conversion number, and now we have a number we can look at and get our head around and go, oh, 18% misfire, that's pretty close to the 27% misfire, that's maximum, I'm interested in that. If it was 0.18% misfire, I'm not too uh, interested in that, that's a low rate of misfire. But in this case, we probably do have a bit of a problem. That's where you find that information in Ford. So what TID and MIDs mean and so forth. Now, for other vehicles, let's say General Motors, you do the same thing, the OEM onestop.com. And for example, I have a couple documents already up, one for Chrysler. Now Chrysler will be a minimal charge. You have to actually log in to their website and there's a minimum charge, but you can for a very reasonable fee, pull up and I've downloaded these all to my hard drive to save them for one fee. So here's all of the different TIDs and SIDs for Chrysler Mode 6. Now, it gives you a little bit of an update on what things mean and so forth, these different applications on different computers, JTECs and SBECs and whatnot. And then here again, there's the TIDs and SIDs. You notice there is no misfire TID, no misfire TID whatsoever, no test for misfire. The reason is, technically, misfires are a continuous monitor not a non-continuous monitor, but a lot of OEMs, Ford, with both 
pre-CAN and post-CAN have misfires in their Mode 6 data. Earlier Chrysler pre-CAN vehicles like this 99 I pulled up from the Chrysler website and downloaded it, saved it, that does not have misfire diagnostics. It, does not, it has it, it doesn't have it in Mode 6. But if we look at a newer Chrysler, here's one for an 08, and that does definitely have the Mode 6 information. Here's a Durango for misfires. We scroll down, we will see misfires on the list here, right about there. Here we go, misfire cylinder data one. So it does change from pre-can to can on different manufacturers. General Motors has the same thing. You can download most of the stuff on Mode 6 definition definitions anytime you need to from OEM One Stop. Just go to the factory site from there, and the rest is just a little bit of research.